Uh, welcome, Louise Goodman. Thank you so very much for coming on the show and getting involved. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Loving your background, all of those pictures. <laughs> it's fantastic. Thank you. I've just got one racing car to your <laughs> goodness how many, 20 or 30. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, from all the uh, various, you know, pit lane walkabouts from touring cars. But um, but yeah, how's, you know, life in lockdown at the minute? It's obviously strange times going for you, really. It is strange times, but I'm just getting busy again because I'm doing some of the Grand Prix this year. So yeah. I was in uh, Bahrain for the season opener, and then obviously the touring cars kicks off at the beginning of May. So very excited about that. I'm looking forward to getting getting back to touring cars and kind of waiting to see how we're going to be covering it this year. Last year, I was kind of, well, all of us were, were locked away in the TV yeah. compound. Um, and uh, so I'm waiting to see what the format's going to be for this year, but hoping, even if not at the start of the year, at some point I'll be able to actually get out and about and around the paddocks and speak to people again, which will be, which will be great. But it'd just be nice to see the cars out, the action going again. And it's, it's kind of, it's always the feeling that summer's on the way. The start of the racing season is always an exciting time. Yeah, absolutely. We've got, we've got plenty to look forward to. I was going to say, you know, last year with, with British touring cars in particular, it must've been a real challenge to not only get the racing going, but with the whole ITV sport, you know, you mentioned the TV compound, getting it, getting the whole show on the road, really. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, it took a lot of effort from a lot of people to, to make it all happen. Um, but it was great. You know, everybody came together and worked out a plan. Obviously, you know, ITV has a, a sort of commitment of care to us to make sure that we were operating in a safe way, the same as, as Toka was doing for, uh, for everybody down in the paddock. So um, it, it was a very, you know, I, I had 101 different WhatsApp groups going the whole time because ordinarily I'd be running around you know, the, the garage is talking to people and, and there was no way to do that. So, so, you know, all of the teams and the championship organisers were absolutely brilliant because they were having to make sure the drivers were where I needed them to be, when I needed them to be there for the drivers as well. And I think particularly for the, for the younger drivers, you know, they weren't talking to a person. They were just kind of staring down a, down a camera mm. lens, which is, you know, a bit more in, intimidating and, or maybe, maybe not, maybe that was less intimidating than having me in their face, who knows, but you know, it, it's a different way of, of operating for everybody. And I think everybody pulled together really well and, and we got the show on the road. And I think, you know, the, the, the feeling we got back from the, from the fans were, was that they were all hugely appreciative that, you know, in those long lockdown weekends, there was, there was some racing for people to watch. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it was, you know, it was obviously a shame, you know, fans couldn't attend at all last year. But, you know, we are really yeah. lucky with, with, you know, thanks to you guys, you know, having, you know, hours of, of life racing on on the British Touring Car weekend. So, you know, thank you. Well, you're very welcome. And we really, we genuinely miss the fans. I know people kept saying, oh, it's not the same without the fans. And, and they weren't just paying lip service. I mean, for me, you know, particularly the final race of the season. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I probably didn't notice it as much at the earlier races because we were literally only in the TV compound. So I couldn't even get near the paddock to see how, how empty it was. But the final race of the season, which I, is year on year, it's my favourite event of the year. The emotion yeah. and the drama. And it just wasn't the same. It felt really flat. I think people enjoyed it watching on the television. But for those of us at the track, you really notice the difference, the lack of atmosphere there. It just... It just wasn't the same at all. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it was a, it was a crazy year last year, not, you know, with the racing and COVID. But in terms of British touring cars, the racing didn't suffer at all. You know, even though we didn't have fans and it was all a bit different, the racing was fantastic as always. It's always brilliant. Isn't it? And now the support championships as well. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's the gift that keeps giving British Touring Car Championship and all the support races on the, on the series. It's a, it's a brilliant championship to to watch you know I'm regularly jumping up down and shouting at the television yeah. when, I, when I'm watching the races and it's a really nice championship to work in as well it's very open it's very accessible it's very friendly and I feel that as a journalist as well as I know the fans feel that you know the fact that they can do the pit lane walkabouts the fact that Toka does things like you know changing around the view of the garages um, which they, they trialed a couple of times so that the cars yeah. are facing into the paddock rather than facing out into the pit lane it you know it's all part of what's at the heart of British Touring Car Championship, and that's being open and accessible in addition to, to the great racing it provides. Yeah, absolutely. Well, how, how did you get into, into, you know, presenting and journalism? Was it always something you wanted to do? No, it wasn't. I kind of fell into it, to be honest. I, um, I was, I originally got into to journalism. I didn't know what I wanted to do when, when I finished school. 
um, and, and done my A-levels. Um, and then I went traveling and while I was traveling, I met the editor of a powerboat racing magazine. I was staying with some friends out in America whose family business was, was building offshore racing powerboats um, and kind of did some work with her. She was doing a stateside issue and, and that's kind of where I got the bug for it. So when I, when I got back home, um, she offered me a job on the magazine and that's really where I learned my journalism. There was no such thing as a journalism degree back then anyway. You know, you, you learn your craft by working for a local paper or magazine or something like that. So that certainly was, was the route for me. Um, through that, I met a guy called Tony Jardine who had his own PR company that was working um, a lot in, in motorsport. And, and I, I went to work for Tony. So really that was my entree into, into motorsport. Um, so I was on the PR side for probably uh, almost 10 years before yeah. uh, first working for Tony and then for Eddie Jordan before I was approached about the, the ITV job. So, no, I never I'm a really bad example to, <laughs> you know, people who, who aspire to do what I do because I just, you know, luck was on my side. I mean, I guess I had to have the, you know, the, the skill to do it as well. I mean, ITV didn't employ me for my broadcasting skills. They employed me because I knew. Formula One, I knew the people in the paddock, I knew the questions to ask, and I knew when to ask them as well. So the kind of the stars aligned for me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, were, were you interested in, in motorsport at all beforehand? I always like anything with wheels and an engine I like right from when I was little you know one of my yeah. biggest thrills as a kid was, was when my dad would get home and from work and I was allowed to park the car in the garage you know <laughs> and I, I I have memories of sitting on his knee at picnic areas and him doing the pedals and, and me doing the steering wheel but no it's not I, I never set out to work in motorsport I did I was aware of it there was no family um, history in the sport but I the town I grew up in a town called Aldsford in Hampshire is where Derek Warwick former yeah. F1 driver, um, former president of the BRDC. That's where Derek comes from. So I used to walk past the family business, Warwick Trailers, on my way to school every morning. And I knew, you know, Derek was stock car racing at the time, so we used to read about him in the local paper. Funnily enough, when I went to work for Tony Jardine, Derek Warwick was, was the first client that really? I worked with. So, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So so I, I knew about motorsport. Um, and as I say, you know, I, I liked... I like cars. I liked you know, a lot of my misspent youth was misspent on the back of motorbikes and that kind of thing. So, but no, I never had any desire. It kind of never crossed my mind that you you could work in the sport. Really, I never really thought about it. Yeah, and and what what advice would you give to anyone wanting to to do something like you? Really, I think. Um, I was very lucky in that my entree into motorsport was in Formula One, and that's unrealistic in this day and age. You know, it's yeah. it's a uh, it's a competitive business. Um, so I think you need to get, you know, you need to have the qualifications these days. So whatever it is that you want to be doing, you need to make sure that you've got the right qualifications. But I think also contacts are really important. So I would say, you know, just, just get out and about and meet people, go to national circuits, meet people there, offer your time, um, and you, that way you'll you'll a get experience, but you'll b make contacts, and you'll also kind of be on the inside. You, you'll hear about things more. So you know, if, if a if a race team or if a Formula One team has, has got hundreds of applications coming in for for a job, you know they're going to err uh, towards people who have expressed an interest in working in the sport, not just loving the sport either. There's a difference between being a fan. And working in the sport it's important to you know when you walk into a paddock you've got to prove that you're there to work you're not there just to collect autographs and have your photos taken with, with racing drivers so so and, and you know there are lots of people who have, have sort of followed that route and have now got jobs in different areas of the of the sport so I think that's probably my, my top tip for for everybody get in there get in at, at sort of ground level get experience and, and make contacts and be prepared to work hard because it is, it is hard work. It's, it's not just a job. It's a way of life really in, in motorsport. It's uh you know, it, it's a, it's a great sport to, to work in. So yeah. the, um, the benefits outweigh the disadvantages. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's a, it's a brilliant sport. It must be, you know, a brilliant job. What would you say is the best, the best thing about it? For me, I love the travel. I've always loved traveling. So for me, although having said that, the traveling is not quite so fun at the moment. Yeah. Know, 
are reams of paperwork that you have to complete before really? you before you get yeah. the plane to go anywhere. Um, and in Bahrain, everything was very controlled. You know, we couldn't leave the hotel except to go to the circuit. And um, but but under normal circumstances, I, I love the travel side of it. It's taken me around the world. Um, you know, and, and whilst I've been in different places, I've tagged on a few days here, a few days there. So I've I've got to got to travel a lot. So and I think the people as well. Yeah. You know, I've I've made a lot of really good friends in 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 the motorsport world. People I met thirty years ago. Who are who are still good friends today? Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you, you mentioned travel. Where would you say has been the, the best place you visited when you've been, you know, working with with in in and amongst motorsport? I love Australia. Yeah. Um, I so the fact that even since you know I don't work at all of the Grand Prix, haven't done for for a few years now since ITV pulled out of the sport, but. But since then, I've I've worked for the Australian Grand Prix Corporation at, at the Melbourne race. Um, yeah. So, and I've got you know my best friend from school went out travelling to Australia and never made it home again. And so, the fact that I get to see her every year, and I've got a whole load of other friends over there, and I just I love Australia. So for me, that's the that's the best place that I get to go to. But I you know I've seen some some fabulous places. You know when I've when I've been to Shanghai um, in the ITV days, a few of us took a few days off, and you know we went to. Beijing and we saw the Great Wall of China and you know I've been in the Far East and Japan is a lovely country as well mm -hmm. really love going to Japan so loads of different places Brazil I like Brazil yeah. as well <laughs> vibrant and like yeah yeah a lot of people don't it, it you know, things don't work as they should sometimes in Brazil you know yeah. we had a we had a case back in the ITV days when when the TV compound had been wired up wrongly and there was God knows how many don't ask me but you know volts of life sort of electricity were potentially going through one of the one of the sound mixing desks in there so it, it can be a, a volatile but it's got so much atmosphere I love yeah. places that have a lot of atmosphere yeah absolutely and what you know you've you said you've worked with Formula One obviously British touring cars you know you're doing more for F1 this year what has been your your favorite thing to to work on uh, I I, I love now I, I really love working on the British Touring Car Championship. You know, I, I had many years of, of working in, in Formula One. It's a hectic schedule. And now, yeah. you know, 23 races, if they get all 23 races away this year, it's such a commitment. It's such yeah. a long time away yeah. from home. Um, and I love the I love the openness of, of the British Touring Car Championship. The way I'll often sum it up is. You know, in Formula One, the answer is no, now what's the question? Whereas in touring cars, the answer is yes, now what's the question? Yeah. I need to quantify that by saying, you know, as, as a broadcaster in the British Touring Car Championship, we're a much bigger fish in a much smaller pond. There's a lot more demand on the Formula One teams and the drivers and their time. And um, so it has to be a, a lot more controlled. But, you know, I, I can remember when I was first working in, in the BTCC, um, I was looking for a driver and somebody said, oh, he's in the back of the, the truck. So I went and knocked on the door and they said, come in. So I opened the door. Then clearly in a driver's briefing, which, yeah. you know, even when I was working for, for Jordan, if I'd interrupted a driver's briefing, I would have been in serious trouble. But they said, no, oh, what, what did you want? I said, I was just after, the, you know, whichever driver. And they said, oh, go on out, you know, do it. <laughs> so they sent him out of a driver's briefing to do an interview with me. Yeah. So, uh, so after... And as I say, I, I appreciate why Formula One has to operate in the way that it does. Yeah. But sometimes it's just a breath of fresh air when you say <laughs> to a driver, I, I just need you now for two minutes and they come out and talk to you rather than I'm getting too old to stand around in the hot sun for, you know, an hour and wait for a wait for a racing driver to come out and talk to me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But, you know, that is something that is brilliant about British touring cars. You know, the fans as well can you know, interact with it so much, you know. You know, COVID aside, you know, we can see the drivers and cars up close, you know, so it's a brilliant championship. Yeah, yeah. I, I find, you know, well, some people who maybe have been so focused on Formula One, they, they've they never looked at BTCC. And when you tell yeah. them, well, just give it a go, give it a go. Yes. Say, oh my God, it's so exciting. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> It's interesting to see, you know, I find it interesting that, that Formula One's now, you know, looking at, at sort of sprint races and that yeah. kind of thing. Things that are the norm in, in BTCC, um, <laughs> you know, they're, they're looking at maybe introducing those or looks like they are going to introduce those to a limited number of the of the Grand Prix this year. So, uh, yeah, 
I think there's there's lots of other championships can learn from the way that you know Alan Gow was set up the British Touring Car Championship to be engaging and and entertaining, and, and I think that's a big difference. I think you know Formula One is 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 an entertainment based sport. Sorry, um, British Touring Car Championship is an entertainment based yeah. sport. Formula One is an engineering based sport. It it, it you know it, it it achieves different things. So and some people would say you know we have a reverse grid. In, in BTCC, that's kind of engineering the spectacle. Yeah. Some people don't agree with that, but you know, each to their own. I think there's place for, um, you know, space for, for all these different kinds of um, championships. Yeah, definitely. Well, you know, the British touring car season, it's not far away. I think you'd agree we've got another brilliant year coming up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We've got new people coming in. We've got old faces returning. We've got drivers changing seats. That's, there's so much happening. Yeah, definitely. Have you got any early predictions? You've got to think Sutton will be up there. Colin Turkington, you know, he's got so much experience now. You've got to think those two will be the, the, the top two in the championship, perhaps. Honestly, I've long since given up making predictions. <laughs> in the I mean, yeah, for sure. You know, the usual suspects are going to, to, going to be in the mix. But there's, you know, the, there's there's been changes within Ash's team. It'll be interesting to see what yeah. effect that has. You know, you've, you've got Gordon Shedden coming back, obviously a, a, a well-established and proven, not just race, but championship winner. You've got Jason Plato coming back. You yeah. know, how's, how's he going to get on? Um, for sure, you know, the BMWs and Colin will be up at the top of the game again. So they're, you know, they're going to have a target on their back. Um, but you just never know who are going to be the people that are going to be challenging you know, Tom Ingram's made the move. You Previously, you would have always put Speedworks in the mix. So, you know, they've got Rory Butcher, a very handy peddler in there now. Um, you know, it's going to be, you know, Tom's moving to Accelerate, a team that, you know, we saw a massive progression last year. So um, what what can he do there to, to help push them forwards? It's, um, there's, there's lots to, going to be lots to get our heads around at the, at the first race. Yeah, definitely. You know, you know, we were talking about your experience with, um, reporting of, of you know British touring cars, Formula One. Are there any races or events um, that really stick out to you? Obviously, you, you previously mentioned how the, the brand's finale in British touring cars is always one you remember. But are there any you know specific races or moments that stick out to you? Um, uh, not particularly, to be honest. I mean, they they come at you thick and fast over the course yeah. of the weekend. By the time we get to race. You know, BTCC race three on a Sunday. I forgot what happened in race one because I've <laughs> I've covered you know eight other races in between. So um, I suppose there are always moments that that you remember, mostly around sort of incidents. Um, you know, big crashes. You know, we saw some of those last year, yeah. and and incidents like you know things that get repeated often. The, the the Hondas taking each other out on the last corner at Alt Park a few years back, and. Um, you know, stuff like that um, sort of sticks in your in your mind for the for the sort of mostly for the interviews that you get from the drivers afterwards and the ways that they respond to it all. Yeah, definitely. Well, I won't keep you for for too much longer. Formula One as well. You know, you're reporting on that. That must be must be brilliant to to be back doing that. How did how did that deal sort of come about? Where did you where did you make the decision to do that as, as well? Well, I was just I was just approached to be honest. Um, this has been it's kind of a new venture called the Virtual Paddock Club. So because yeah. the Paddock Club is like the sort of premier hospitality offering at the, the Grand Prix, and obviously there was no Paddock Club. I think they had like one Paddock Club at one event last year or two events. Um, so um, a guy called Sam Power, who's an Australian guy, former racing driver, who was one of the hosts in the Paddock Club, um, and um, a lady called Kate Bevan and Lucy Anthony, two ladies at, at Formula One kind of put together this idea of having a virtual paddock club, which is really an online show to engage with the, the, the customers and, um, you know, the people who were previously been with them in the paddock club. So, so, and it's, so they've asked me to come on board and, and help out with that this year at some of the races. Obviously there's, there's quite a few I can't do because of my touring car commitments. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a, it's a new venture. I get the pleasure of working with Jade Edwards as well, who yeah. is, um, was formerly a what well, is a paddock club host who, who's worked for Sam at the events in previous years. So she's joining us on these online calls as well as there'll be there'll be other people taking part as well. So um, it's really nice to be 
back in the in the paddock um even though I can't sit down and have a coffee with people as I as I would have done previously but to actually I've kind of ever since my ITV days I've dipped in and out I've done you know I've done a couple of races every year very often so in Melbourne I do the circuit television I sometimes do that in Singapore in Monaco I'd be hosting on boats at Silverstone I'd be hosting it's a different bits and bobs but it's nice to be back in there a bit more regularly with a with a sort of project that you can you know you're in at the ground level and can see how it develops and, and moves forward hopefully um at some point it'll be you know at the moment it's, it's very much private just for sort of invited guests but hopefully going forward they'll they'll look kind of opening it out as an offering and, and public will be able to you know join in and, and see what we're doing but it's nice it's a really interactive show that we're doing it you know it's a it's a it's a zoom um show so there's the facility for and we, we get people like you know mika hackenham was our our legend who took part in the last race and you know he's, he's on the call for 15 minutes so people get the opportunity to to put questions to him either in the chat or to you know to come up as yeah. we are now and and speak with him so it's a really nice little little innovation yeah definitely you know it must be it must be brilliant to get fans involved especially you know at the events where you know most of the events where you know fans haven't been been allowed back in yet exactly exactly that's the whole thing behind it and i think that for me has been one of the biggest changes in in formula one in recent years is is the, the fan in engagement and um, you know the, when you look at things like you know the, the Netflix series that's bringing a yeah. whole new bunch of eyes in to watch Formula One because they can see the characters they they may previously have not been huge fans of the sport and I know some people who um, you know are regular viewers of Formula One will, will sort of say well it didn't show this and it didn't show that and but it's entertainment it, yeah. you know it, it's entertainment and if it's bringing new new idea new eyes and, and you know new fans into the sport then I'm absolutely all for it yeah exactly well you know you've been brilliant thank you so so very much My for, pleasure. for coming and having a chat you know we've got plenty to look forward to and you know I look forward to you know seeing you back on our, our TV when when British Touring Cars does return return it's not too not too far away now so no. thank you <laughs> So well, yeah, thank you. See you yeah. soon. And uh, yeah, have a, have a great season. Me too. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.